Awesome. Thanks so much. So excited to be here. Uh, and thanks everyone for joining. We are talking all things Web3 economy. Uh, very awesome panel. Uh, and I'm going to make sure uh, to include Bill as well on Zoom. So hello, Bill. Let's start with some quick intros. Um, I'll start with myself. I'm Grace. I work at Lux Capital. We're an early stage venture firm investing in people, inventing the future, investing at the intersection of tech and science. I focus on the computational sciences, so things like blockchain, AI, ML, et cetera, focusing a lot of my time on Web3 infrastructure, so developer infrastructure and tooling. We're investors an MIT alum, uh, Sam Bankman-Fried of FTX, uh, as well as Anchorage and, and several other investments. But let's go through our panel. Uh, Navroop, do you want to get started? Sure. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Great to see all of you here. Uh, my name is Navroop Sadev, and I'm the founder and CEO of The Digital Economist. We are a Washington, D.C.-based global impact platform focused on the knowledge services as well as the products for uh, the Web3 and sustainability and sort of the intersection at economic science. Uh, strategy as well as uh, all things that technologies that you mentioned, Grace, feeding into Web3. Um, so delighted to be here. Also part of MIT Connection Science since I think four years now. So always great to be back here. Alex? My name is Alex Lipton. I am a global head of research and development at the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority, which is the uh, third largest probably uh, sovereign wealth fund. I am based in Abu Dhabi. Uh, in addition to my uh, responsibilities at IDEA, I'm also uh, a fellow here at the Connection Science and Engineering with Professor Pentland, as well as a visiting professor at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem and the Khalifa University in Abu Dhabi. Hmm? My interests are uh, manifold, but uh, here I'm in the capacity of somebody who is interested in blockchain and distributed ledgers. Giuseppe? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Giuseppe Stuto. I'm the co-founder and managing partner of 186 Ventures. We are a Boston-based pre-seed and seed uh, venture capital firm investing across fintech, Web3-enabled technologies, future of work, and marketplace on both the consumer and enterprise side. Prior to that, I was a founder myself of a technical engineering background that built a product in a consumer-oriented uh, space. And today, we are, as it relates to Web3-enabled technologies, we're very interested in the infrastructure that will help stand up the next uh, global innovations across remittances, stablecoin technologies, and just underlying business-to-business -business payments infrastructure. Awesome. Bill. Oh, we do not have audio on Bill's side. Uh, I am speaking. Here you so, are. Okay, keep going. Oh, Try again. Okay, great. Good morning from Silicon Valley. Uh, Bill Barright here. I'm the founder and CEO of Abra. Abra is a uh, crypto banking platform. We service several million uh, consumers globally in both emerging markets as well as in the first world in the US, Europe, other places. Uh, manage several billion in assets. We have our institutional business, which provides uh, brokerage and, and lending uh, services, and, and also our uh, asset management business, which manages uh, several funds for both providing uh, yield management, uh, custody, treasury uh, for, uh, for crypto and, and yield management as well. Awesome. And Bill. I've been in tech and tech in the crypto space since it was cryptography. Uh, I was uh, part of the uh, SSL team uh, at Netscape on the certificate authority business before before getting into the business side of things. Awesome, Bill, I was gonna throw the first question over to you to make sure we get you involved in the conversation. Uh, love to hear your perspective on the biggest value drivers in, in the Web3 economy today. Perhaps a lot of it pertains to what you're building on day to day and in your hat as well, but, but get us started. Sure, so for me, Web3 is, is really simply about the tokenization of everything. And everything can go from finance and banking through gaming, uh, identity, and all the way down the list, then you have to kind of look at each aspect of, of you know, that tokenization of everything stacked to say, what's the value? Um, clearly finance uh, and gaming have, have kind of led the charge in terms of providing value so far. And I'll kind of put collectibles in the, in the gaming space for now, uh, you know, related to NFTs and things like that, where we're, start, we're still trying to get our hands around what digital rights actually mean. Uh, and how to basically trade, manage, and create value. But clearly, um, having trustless uh, banking is tremendous, tremendous value, whether it's for stable coins or DeFi or you know, um, 
or NFTs, right? Where you're probably talking about half a, half a trillion dollars already in total value locked from zero, uh, you know, six, seven years ago. So I think it's going to evolve from there uh, into, uh, I have a great couple of slides on this. I'm not going to put it up now, but, but that actually walk through the different uh, sectors that are likely to be impacted in the short term. But you're already talking about the fastest adopted new technology in history, uh, particularly as it relates to Ethereum and Bitcoin. And it's just going to keep growing uh, from here uh, and integrate and consume those other sectors, in our opinion. Giuseppe, do you agree? What would you add? Well, what I would add, um, I, I, I agree with a lot of that in, in that there's been a ton of adoption around uh, the Bitcoin and Ethereum networks. But if we, if we look at Web3 as a global economy, one of the only use cases we've seen today that have proven enduring value based on sustainable economics and just sustainable mechanics are those of stable coins. Uh, if we look at a lot of the other technologies, aka DeFi, a lot of them have been founded on unproven, unsustainable economics, uh, and that's fine. We're in the nascent stages, a lot of early experiments. Uh, but what's been exciting so far is uh, what stable coins can do to various modes of payment processing, whether it be for large enterprises and smaller, um, kind of even smaller ones. I think we're, we're really early on for many of the other second and third order innovations across gaming and media to truly uh, take off. And, um, but we'll, yeah, that's what I would say. Awesome. I'm going to jump to the next question, which is kind of an extension of this one, which is how do we think the value drivers will evolve or change. So maybe if act one is kind of the financial systems today, how are you thinking about act two or act three? This could include, you know, the development of smart contract applications, some of the EVM ecosystem, dApps, et cetera. Uh, how do you think those drivers will evolve or, you know, stay the same uh, in the next, you know, three to five years? Navru? Sure, I can start on that. Um, actually, just very quickly to respond to the previous yeah. one. Um, I agree with everything Bill said, and Giuseppe, I think your add-ons there as well, but, but I do believe Web3 is so much more than just that. Um, you know, I, I loved hearing that tokenization and everything, great, we work on tokenization, but um, I think Web3 is moving away from platform economics where you have a single marketplace or platform where users are the, the creators of value, right? Uh, but it's appropriated by a single third party uh, or the, you know, the creator of that platform. And so, you know, it's not just about decentralization or transparency, or privacy, it's all of that and more. So I think for me, at least the past six years of work that I've done is really rethinking from first principles where the value is going to evolve from. And sure, I mean, stable coins is uh, one of the more uh, sophisticated use cases, but I think we're still pretty early on when it comes to sort of really figuring out uh, the economics of it. Um, but, you know, markets, of course, evolve over time. Everything is based on history and has path dependence to it. So, so those are, uh, I think, some key things there. But, um, you know, your question around what are those drivers for value, um, I think um, this sort of transition we see from Web 2 to Web 3, and I think that's really kind of the agenda for today, um, is, is very exciting. And um, not only, you know, disruptors in the Web 3 space, but also Web 2 companies that are, you know, uh, continuously trying to innovate and not just stay on top of it, but also stay ahead of the curve. Um, so that's... For me, I think it's 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 a movement that is only going to accelerate. It's been really interesting for me to see, you know, four to five hundred companies now storing, you know, crypto on the balance sheet, uh, and or kind of the the beginning of crypto companies being added to fintech rails, uh, but also fintech company crypto companies like a Coinbase becoming more neo bank like on the fintech side. So totally agree. Um, Alex, what do you think? Well, uh, in my mind, uh, one of the interesting things about blockchains and distributed ledgers in general is that uh, they are things in, in, it, in themselves in a sense that there is no direct link between objects uh, which are um, identified on the blockchain and the physical representation. Uh, if and when this link is uh, established, both from a technical perspective, but also from a legal and regulatory perspective, I think then, you know, the marketplace will explode enormously and expand uh, in all kinds of directions which we cannot even imagine at the moment. 
in general, what we should be thinking about is a, is a ledger of ledgers of ledgers. So at, at least you know three levels of abstraction is important. At the baseline, it should be an interoperability between different ledgers. At the second layer, it is uh, at the protocol layer, it, the facility and ability to uh, create uh, the secondary ledgers, which actually reflect uh, both uh, fungible and non-fungible uh, tokens, if you wish. And then all this is operating in harmony without uh, uh, breakages at the protocol level. That would be super important. The other thing which I think uh, relates to what I already have said, but it's a slightly different angle. Unfortunately, the distributed nature of many protocols is somewhat diluted by the centralized uh, um, access to these protocols uh, through centralized exchanges and things like that. So from that perspective, uh, I would very much like to see a much more distributed access to distributed protocols, if you wish. Yeah, that's where I think the main effort should be directed. And uh, those, those are all great thoughts. Well, with the, I agree with what both of you said for sure. And, and I think some additional uh, use cases to think about. Um, what's happening now with, with uh, remittances and where payment infrastructure is going on top of stable coins, it's effectively democratizing any institution to serve as their own custodian. That is the, now we're talking 10, 30 years out, right? But if you envision a world where that's the case, you no longer have a world where you have to depend on banks, which are ledgers today, because if you think about it, every dollar is stored at the Fed, right? They're not their own custodian in many ways. So if you look at a world there, it's very different, right? A lot of what Alex said are prerequisites to that world from, uh, from existing. So that, that makes for some pretty interesting infrastructure opportunities. But it also is sobering because it really demonstrates how early on we are, right? And we're not really able to just skip to that. Um, but that, that's certainly where I think we, we, that's the phase two, in my opinion. Yeah, and that leads to kind of the next question and, and kind of seeing the obvious of where we are today, right? Stablecoin markets aren't in the best shape. <laughs> we're in a definitely a kind of a crypto bear market. Be curious to get all your takes on kind of the current crypto market as it stands. Uh, are we still uh, in a downward spiral? Has the market stabilized yet? Should we expect more volatility? And, and how do you think about both kind of the short term and near term uh, crypto markets right now on the economic side? You wanna start? Sure, Cer I'm certainly opinionated on this. Yeah. <laughs> when I say stable coins, I mean the truly stable ones. So if you look at USDC, only 2% of it is collateralized with commercial paper, right? The rest of it is relatively stable. There have uh, unfortunately been um, some, some misleading ones in recent times uh, being deployed. But uh, essentially, w it, w when I think about volatility in a near to medium term, it's really just look at the regulatory motion. And this is why, and Alex, you were hitting on this a little bit, uh, I believe, but uh, regulation is what will lead to more robust markets uh, and starting with the kind of protocol layer innovation. So looking at, and, and, and the, some of the uh, recent implosions, if anything, will be a forcing function for expediting some of this regulation, which is fantastic, right, as it relates to recovery. I might throw it up to Bill uh, and see if you have a strong perspective on this, especially kind of given where your company's operating. Yeah, sure, I do. Uh, so, so many, you know, components to this question to break down. So let's, we can kind of work uh, from the past to today, uh, just thinking about stablecoin market, which is a horrible phrase, by the way. Uh, even, the, even the stable coins between themselves fluctuate two to 3% a day uh, on exchanges. So, so the only thing that's stable is, is when you can get your money out directly via the, the minter of the, of the coin. Uh, other than that, there's really nothing stable uh, about them. It's like saying the dollar is stable. The dollar itself is not a stable coin. So anyway, put that aside, um, you know, there was an attempt, obviously, to create an algorithmic version of a stable coin, which wasn't based upon true reserves, right? Um, and it's just another version of a synthetic asset, which Wall Street has been trying to create for or has been creating for decades. Uh, Abra was actually created on the very premise of having a synthetic dollar. Back to the remittance question, ABRA, a better remittance app. We tried to create a synthetic dollar using Bitcoin, and it worked flawlessly. We, we actually transacted billions of dollars with it, uh, but the CFTC didn't like it, and there was no smart contracts at the time, so, so we shut it down. The difference is, is with, um, with Luna, 
you had a synthetic asset based upon a, a crappy underlying asset, which was a token they created out of nothing. I would posit if they were doing it with something like Bitcoin or Ethereum, kind of like DAI, <clears throat> excuse me, like DAI, it might have actually worked. We don't know, but they were irresponsible in terms of allowing too many people into the anchor protocol too quickly who were calling it a bank account when it wasn't. And, and that was really the crux of the issue. Otherwise, it was just technology. And, and so that's one that failed. And that's fine. You know, we're going to have lots of these smart contract systems that fail. Hopefully, they won't fail with lots and lots and, or billions and tens of billions of dollars of consumer money too soon, which is, which is really the biggest problem with, with Luna. Um, you know, now, fast forward a few weeks, and we've got, obviously, uh, some very poor risk management processes uh, in the crypto lending space. Uh, which are leading to some, to what's starting to look like a, you know a long term capital management blow up, and and LTCM was in a highly regulated market by the way, uh, when you know when they blew up as kind of the largest player in in the equities prime broker space, you've got uh, Three Arrows and and others basically playing the same role in the crypto space, and it looks like in the background the folks that were working with them, particularly Voyager Celsius that have been in the press, had horrible risk management processes. Uh, you know, one of the basics of risk management, and I was at Fixed Income at Goldman, and you learn this very early, is, is concentration risk. And if you've got high nine figures out of, you know, a few billion of your assets in one lending pool like that, um, and it blows up, this is what happens. And it's going to take probably a couple of years for this to unwind. I think the crypto markets themselves and, and, and the technology platforms and the companies will be mostly fine. Um, except for some startups that unfortunately were using this as treasury. And that's a recurring theme here uh, is, is companies and people are treating a lot of these things like personal treasury uh, when a lot of them are relatively unproven. You know, we run a, a very conservative centralized banking operation at Abra and, you know, you'll never see us say, oh, we offer 20% returns. I mean, it's, it's, it's just not possible without taking incredible outsized risk. So sorry for the long answer, but this is basically a cascading comedy of, of errors that unfortunately is happening at the same time that we're experiencing the first um, recessionary market uh, that the crypto world has ever seen. So, so you have all of these things happening at exactly the same time. And you know, yes, we're going to come out of this. Yes, the network effects are what's driving ultimately the price and economics for crypto. And those are still going to be strong. Um, and hopefully, as a result of coming out of all of this, we'll, we'll be even stronger for it. Uh, but um, you know, I don't think we've necessarily seen the worst of all of the, this comedy of errors, uh, unfortunately. Excellent answer. And I think great summary. So, so thank you for that. I, I want to throw it to our economist here uh, to talk more about the cycles of, of it all uh, and, and kind of thinking about in tandem where we are in the cycle uh, and where we'll be going next. So Nifrup, love to hear your perspective. Sure. Yeah, I think... Um yeah, Bill covered a lot of a lot of the things, um, but I have a lot, a little bit of a longer term view on the adoption of technology, the build out, as well as I think very interestingly on risk, right? As as a as a topic in general. So just if you kind of zoom out a little bit, um, first of all, the way we measure risk, assess risk, and mitigate risk is completely broken, uh, and that's just not specific to the crypto assets, right? It's a, it's a theme all over uh, across asset classes. Again, not just in public markets, but even more broadly, with climate change, uh, with the threats to digital technologies, like the physical threats. It's not a given that the current systems we have will continue to serve us. So that's the first thing. The second is around uh, the new measures we need, of course, uh, in order to mitigate risk effectively. Right? Uh, I think uh, the markets currently are like a good myth buster that, oh, hey, something that started as a, a counter movement to you know, the rigged public markets uh, is in fact highly correlated with it. So you know, we continue to see this concentration um, and centralization of um, uh, not just risk, but also um, uh, really where we drive information from. And, and, and that's kind of a sad reality. Uh, but the other thing which I am optimistic about is really the adoption and the build out of the tech, right? And I think Sandy mentioned that a few years ago, we talked about that there's enough interesting people and there's enough capital and so much more now that, you know, a few years from now, 
we will see interesting innovation that's already happening emerge from that more sophisticated um, and, and, and at the same time, um, you know, more uh, hopefully uh, mitigated against risks. So um, I'm optimistic on that, on everything that we see. I mean, I think currently the NFT space is just really noisy. It's hard to see what's real, what's not. Everybody has an NFT project. Uh, you meet 10 of them in a day. Um, but, you know, again, and a lot of people don't understand what, what NFTs are and uh, what's sort of the innovation value, the fact that, you know, ultimately through, uh, to your point earlier, uh, it's central, centralized access um, to something that they don't fully understand is decentralized or not. So I think a lot of these terms are being thrown out. And sadly, we kind of live in a, society for the lack of a better term that's you know marketing precedes the actual build out so you know and i think you just have to be careful about that from a you know personal perspective too yeah you touched on a great point and as we kind of near the last few minutes of a panel uh love to throw it back over to alex and think about what are the key kind of obstacles as you think about kind of the the near and, and midterm kind of crypto market uh as you think about kind of web3 economy growth uh and adoption Okay. Um, in my mind, uh, there are several. So one, as I already said, is the lack of discernible link between uh, real world and uh, ledger. Uh, it's a ledger representation, right? So if you look, for example, at the uh, archetypal uh, blockchain, uh, Bitcoin protocol, you will see that the whole thing reminds mostly the uh, Rube Goldberg machine in a sense that all this machinery is used to actually transfer unspent transaction outputs from one address to the other, so nothing else. And, um, you know, from that perspective, we really need to get to, to some better, better world where the protocols themselves would be uh, much more uh, sophisticated, flexible, and frankly cheaper. You know, this cheapness, uh, people uh, do not emphasize that much when they are acquiring cryptocurrencies for the purposes of uh, um, speculation or just entertainment, if you wish, because I think for the first time ever, the value of cryptos is derived so, as much as from entertainment, from than from other sources, but reality of the situation is that we need uh, cheaper algorithms, uh, better regulation. We need to resolve as a society the degree of anonymity slash pseudonymity slash uh, non-anonymity which we need uh, to impose in order to make uh, the whole system on the one hand uh, user-friendly and protecting uh, natural privacy which is associated with individuals and companies, but at the same time I'm allowing to solve for anti-money laundering issues and uh, uh, you know uh, know your cl client issues and things of that nature. So there is no clear and crisp understanding, and this is not a mathematical problem as opposite to what I was talking about a moment ago. Uh, there is no clear societal understanding. Of, of what we really want, right? But once this is resolved uh, one way or the other, uh, we should be thinking of building a holistic system where physical objects, the digital avatars, and payment systems all operate as, a, um, as an orchestra, if you wish, and where uh, value is uh, seamlessly moved, taxed as appropriate, uh, recorded as necessary, and uh, in general, we move from a fairly clunky uh, existing system to something much sleeker than that. But that will take a lot of effort. As we can see right now, there are all kinds of th things which simply, as Bill already mentioned, simply cannot be achieved. You cannot receive a 20% return on a stable coin. And I kind of uh, sympathize with people who were duped into that, but if they were to think, for two minutes, they would figure it out that, you know, like your bank account offers you at best 50 basis points, if that, and if somebody else promises you 20%, probably this is because they are not planning to give you 20% or anything, right? So we need to solve these issues, this, like, separate chaff from wheat, and then we can move to the next level. So there are technological obstacles, psychological obstacles, regulatory obstacles, and philosophical obstacles. Once all this is resolved, uh, the sky's the limit. 
Very well said. Well, I think we have to end on that note. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining. Uh, learned a ton. A round of applause. <laughs>